All right, fine people of YouTube, welcome to lesson eight of the Swift UI to do list app. In the last part, we started setting up our basic account UI with these nice tabs and bars at the top, the plus button here as well. In this video, we'll continue, particularly working on presenting something when we tap on this plus button to create a new to do list item. So, but without further ado, destroy that like button down below and let's continue building. So what do we have here? Well, we have our plus button in place and that resides in our to-do list view, particularly this button that we added to the toolbar. And when we tap on it, we want something to happen. Um, and that begs the question, well, what do we want it uh, to do when we tap on it? Well, similar to what we have done in other cases, we're gonna basically assign a binding that is going to inform our view that, hey, we wanna show another view. Now the other view we wanna show is our new item view. So let's see if we have that here. We do indeed have it here. And inside of here, what I will do is I'm gonna start by tossing in a V stack. Let's say Command Shift P so we can actually see this thing on the right hand side. That's how we build this stuff by actually seeing it. And let's start by creating a uh, label here and we're gonna say new item. We're gonna make this bold and perhaps we're gonna bump up its font size as well. I'm gonna say this is a font size of size maybe like 32. Once we've added that there, the next thing we're gonna want in here is a form. And if you just think about the basic semantics of adding a new element, uh, to a to-do list app, we want to have a title or a name, call it what you will. We are going to want to have a way to select a due date and then basically a button. So let's create all of these. We'll have a text field is what I'm looking for here. So we're going to say this is going to be either name or title, call it what you will. We're going to want a binding and like we've done in all of our other forms, we're going to have a published property in our view model. I will call it title. So let's actually stick that view model on here, which we have not done yet. So let's say state object var view model is going to be basically the associated view model that we have named super conveniently like so. Similar to other view models, let's jump into here and actually start sticking on some published properties. So I'm gonna say published var title will be an empty string. We also, in this case, want a due date. And a due date by default will be uh, a instance of a date. And whenever you create a date, it gets uh, initialized as the current date and time. Um, kind of important, and you'll, we'll see in a moment why that is. But let's actually create this. We also want a date picker. And with our date picker, what we want to do is have a title key here for due date. Our selection is going to be view model dot due date. Let's say command shift P. Let's see what that's looking like. All right, so we've got our due date here. We also got a field at the top. And we do wanna have a date picker style. And if you just type in date picker style, you'll see that there's a wheel, there's a default, compact. I'm gonna change this to be, let's try graphical. I actually don't recall what that looks like, but we'll change it and hope it's the correct one. It is indeed the correct one. It's the one where you can see the entirety of the, um, the, the date as well as the time at the bottom, which is what I'm looking for. Let's also go and uh, add a text field style here. And what we want is a default text field style. So this is looking pretty darn good already. And lastly, we want a TL button. Remember that button that we had created to be reusable. So we will have a title here of save and maybe we will use pink as the button and then we'll have an action in here. And this action will probably trigger something on our view model, something along the lines of let's do view model dot save. We'll want to create that function there since it doesn't exist yet even though we will be implementing it much later on. All right, so let's do Command B, make sure that we are able to build. So we have this pretty nifty looking view here as soon as it loads, but we don't really have a way to present this yet. Let me also stick a padding off this, make our button a little more uh, breathable in terms of spacing there. So let's jump back into our simulator. When we tap on uh, the plus button up here, 
we want to basically show this view via a sheet, right? We want it to be modally presented, in other words. To do that, luckily, SwiftUI has a modifier that is super creatively called, you guessed it, sheet. So a sheet can take in a binding for if it's presented or not, and then content as well. So for our binding here, we are going to say view model, and we are going to say showing a new item view, just like that. And essentially, this is going to be a published property off of the view model that we've got here. So we'll say at published var showing this and by default it's false right because when our app first launches and gets to the screen we don't want this to be shown right away and the content that is going to be shown is our new item view so go ahead and hit command b to just compile make sure everything is working let's give our preview a run and let's give this a run in our simulator and tap on this plus button all right, so something weird is going on. We're not actually showing it. Ah, and I see what I forgot to do. When we tap on the button, we actually want to set this to be true. So here we will say view model showing. We're going to set this to true. All right, let's give it a shot for the second time. Hopefully when we tap this now, we should see that other screen. Beautiful. We do indeed see it. So our new item uh, label at the top is a slightly bit ugly because it's so flush to the top of the screen. So let me jump into that view and let's take care of that. So we'll jump into here and on this, perhaps we can add a little bit of padding. Um, and if that's not you know sufficient, we can always adjust the top padding in particular. But I think what we'll want to do is just change the top. So I'll change top and maybe make it 100, which will push it down from the top 100 points. Okay, cool, looking a little better in light mode and dark mode, it looks pretty nice. We can type in a title here, so maybe we need to get some milk, and I can select one of these dates, as well as I have a nice time picker for hour, minute, as well as AM and PM. Okay, so we're not gonna actually work on saving this quite yet. Uh, we do want a way to dismiss that screen. So you just saw there, I can actually swipe it down but it would also be great if I can get it to go away once we hit the save button. Um, pre presumably we'll want to do that once you know the user has actually hit save uh, and we have actually gone ahead and saved that result into the database. So what I'll create here is a binding that we need to pass in and this is going to be a new item presented and we're not gonna actually have a default value for this, it will be of type bool. But rather, what we'll do is, wherever we're creating this view, you'll see, and this is our to-do list view, that it actually asks us, um, go ahead and pass in your uh, new item presented binding. And what we can do here is simply pass in view model dot showing new item view. Let me just hit command B and make sure you prefix this with a dollar, otherwise it'll yell at you like it just did for me. And let's see why this is yelling now. It is actually yelling at me now because we need to do the same thing for our preview here. So in our preview, I'll go ahead and say binding uh, with a wrapped value. So let's see, getter and setter. I guess we can do it this way. We'll make this simple. So in this case, we will return uh, true. And for the setter, we'll just do nothing and that should be sufficient. Let's see if our preview still works. Sometimes um, if you don't set up your Swift UI previews appropriately, they don't decide to load, but in our case, they do. So cool, so we have this button here in our new item view, and whenever we try to go and save um, a new element, assuming it did save correctly, we can also now say, because we have this binding in here, we can say new item presented and we can set this guy to false, which should trigger our view to go away. So let's give this a shot in our simulator. I'll get this presented, I'll hit save, and boom, it disappears beautifully just like that. The last thing that I wanna address in this video is some basic validation of inputting stuff on the screen, and more importantly, handling um, that validation and if something goes wrong, right? So showing an alert to the user if they're trying to save without a title or if they're trying to select a due date that's older than today, um, so on and so forth. 
So what I'm gonna do here is inside of the save functionality, um, rather the view model, what I'll do here is I'll say var can save, and we're basically creating a computed property here in which we're going to check a few things. We are going to first say guard that the title isn't empty, else we'll say, hey, return false. We'll also make sure that we're gonna guard title that is trimming in the white space character set. That way we don't want to go ahead and actually allow the user to save just a bunch of spaces and tabs. The next thing that we are going to do in here is we're gonna say, make sure that the due date is greater than or equal to today minus 86,400 seconds. And I'm gonna explain that in two seconds. Alrighty, we're gonna return false otherwise. So by saying due date is greater than today, which is just date, that makes sense, right? Make sure it's greater than or equal to today. The problem becomes that uh, this date is initialized to the current uh, date, like the actual calendar date. In my case, it's April 30th, but also the hour and second. And we get into some time zone complexity. So what we actually do is we're subtracting 86,400 seconds, and you might be wondering what on earth is this number? This is how many seconds exist in the day. So we're taking the current date and just subtracting um, 24 hours, and we're saying make sure the due date is greater than or equal to yesterday. So in some cases, you will be able to pick yesterday, but this will allow you to pick today and not run into any weird issues. It's a pretty nifty little edge case, but I'm just gonna do it this way for the sake of simplicity. Okay, cool. So now that we've got that there, before we try to save a new element right away, what I'll do is I'll say if view model can save, do that. Otherwise, we want to show some sort of alert. And the way we'll do that is by saying view model dot show uh, alert will be true. And I, and I realize a show alert does not exist yet, so not, not to worry. So let's jump into our view model here, and like we did for so many other published properties, let's create a new one. This is uh, going to be called show alert, and by default, it will be false. Now back inside our view, we're gonna use a very conveniently named modifier, and you guessed it, it's literally called alert, and alert, uh, we're going to use a variant that has a is presented and a content, so the first one actually, and this will be uh, view model that show alert, and in the content we're basically going to show the user a alert with a title and a message. So let's do title is going to be error, and message is going to be please fill in all uh, fields and select due date. Uh, newer than uh, today or newer, I guess. So let's reword this. So select the due date that is today or newer. So let's give this a build and run and let's see if we have any issues. Um, it looks like we already have an issue and that issue is that our message here should probably be a text if I was to be a guessing man. So let's change these to text, AKA labels. I'm also gonna line break this so we can actually read it a little better. And let's give this a build and run. Let's try to save a new element without filling anything in here. So I'm gonna hit save and I should get yelled at and it should not dismiss, which indeed we do. Now let me type in an element. Let's say we need to buy some, buy some milk. Eh, let's buy some eggs instead. Eggs are expensive these days. Everyone needs eggs. So let's buy some eggs. Let's say we gotta do this tomorrow, May 1st. And maybe you have a crazy person, and I'm gonna do this at 5.45 a.m. when no stores are open, so let's do that. We expect to see this view dismissed because all the fields are valid, so if I hit save, it does indeed dismiss. So that is all we've got in this video. Let's do a quick recap because we actually did a lot. We created the UI for this new item view, and the way we did that is by creating a form that we've got right here. We also have this text at the top inside, all of this is uh, inside of a V stack, so it's vertically oriented and nicely nested. We also created a view model with some basic logic functionality to verify that we can indeed save the data and can save uh, in the view model here is checking that we have a title set that's not empty 
and that our due date is an appropriate range of today or after. Uh, and then save isn't doing anything yet. We also back in our uh, view for the to-do list view, we leveraged the sheet modifier and we created this is presented via a binding and we present this new item view. So that's how we're gonna get this to show up and get it functioning. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna start working on actually saving and creating these to-do list items, getting them to show up here, so on and so forth. So hit that like button before clicking away if you've made it this far. Kudos to you for keeping up and staying with, uh, staying the course with this series. Appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next part.